Welcome to episode 2 of People Behind the Projects, a series designed to highlight public officers for their diligence, dedication, and invaluable contributions towards the productivity of the public service. In People Behind the Projects, we place emphasis on the officers who toil behind the scenes to ensure that projects, programs, and public services are effectively delivered. Our first episode featured the staff of the Adult Education Division and their contribution to lifelong learning during this pandemic. In this new episode, we feature some of the officers of the Dominica Meteorological Services, Mrs. Janelle Garry Matheson, Mrs. Farah Rock Career, Mrs. Annie Carrot Joseph, and Mr. Marshall Alexander. In this time of increased focus on climate change and changing weather patterns, we showcase a group of public officers who are on the front line of climate resilience. Join me as we highlight these officers. My name is Annie Curry Joseph and I am the Climatological Personnel at the Dominica Meteorological Service. I have been employed here for the past 13 years. Okay, so our main mandate here at the office is to provide a basic weather observation for aviation purposes. So we would do an observation every hour on the hour and we would provide this information to Tower and we also transmit those out to the to the wider world. Things that I basically enjoy here would be going out and meeting of, of people like the farmers, you know, the, the fishermen, you also meet school children. Apart from the main mandate which is observation, I also specialize in applied meteorology and this is basically where you would dissect from just weather and move into how do you apply weather and climate information to various sectors. Another aspect here would be, you know, when you have, for instance, a system, a hurricane system would be coming and then you become some of the most popular people on the island. People actually knowing who you are. So when they meet you, wherever they meet you, it's like you're always at work. So, you know, they ask what the weather like for today or what they expect, you know, I hear the hurricane coming or what, what is, is it really coming? And those kind of a thing. So it allows you, people, to interact with you on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're inside or outside. So it's a, you have to carry a crown all the way you go. I am Farah Rock Carey. I'm a mid-level meteorological technician specializing in instrument maintenance and repair. I am based at the Canefield Airport. However, my job takes me around the island where we have various stations. This is an automatic rain recorder. Our task is on a monthly basis to maintain and service the various instruments. That would include inspection, cleaning, and oiling where necessary. The rain falls into this funnel. Enters through here. And this, see it's moving, would tip either on this side or that side. My name is Janet Garry McPherson. I work as a mid-level meteorological technician, specializing in instruments. I have been with the Met Office for 20 years now. This is the data logger for our automatic weather station at the Canefield Airport. It's very essential in having accurate forecasts, not just for us here, but on a worldwide scale and monitoring, especially now that um, you need accurate data for monitoring of trends in the weather and to prove or disprove climate change. On a monthly basis, we come in and we download the data and we store it as a backup so that if some, the logger has her own specific capacity and so we have to come in and download that data before it Overrides. I'm happy it's raining today that we are doing the filming because this is all part of our job. We do our job in all kinds of weather, whether it's cloudy, sunny, rainy, thunder, lightning. So I started off as an entry level technician. Everyone starts off as an entry level technician um, where you do observations. Yeah. But right now I am a mid level technician. So the thing about it, I started off at that level and have moved up. So I do both observations and also I do instrument maintenance and repair. Um, the best part about it is going outdoors because um, yes, we get to go out in the bush, quote unquote. <laughs> we get to fight with the insects, the grass and everything. So that makes it exciting. And not every day is the same. That's the best part about the job. Whether you're doing observations and or instruments, 
no day is the same. So that's the wonderful part about it. And also knowing too that you're making a valuable contribution to Dominica. Your job is very important. I was called into work. Um, I was asked to work the night shift for Maria. And so at the time we were expecting a category two hurricane. Um, I was supposed to come in at 8 p 4, 8 p.m. I decided to go in during daylight hours and so I left home about after three. Um, and it was already raining a lot. Um, came in so that my colleague that was at work could go home. And I came in by the time we exchanged shift and she went home. It was already raining so I had to monitor and also secure the equipment that was in the office. By the time it was 7 p.m., a colleague from another island message to say it was Category 5. At that point, I felt very helpless. As the evening progressed, wind and rain, thunder, lightning, and then I started having flooding in the office because the building above us had been compromised and so the other people in the building had to come in to help me cover up and remove equipment that was still on the floor that we didn't expect to get any water from. Um, and then I had to abandon the office by 9, a. 9 p.m. Um, to seek shelter in another part of the airport. But at the point of getting the Category 5 message from a colleague in, from St. Kitts, the security guards at the airport, I called them in, explained to them what we were going to experience. I told them to seek out those areas, put as many important stuff as they had to secure in that area. And so that ended up being two washrooms and another smaller area for security screening. And so that's where we spent the night. We had to leave home and go out to the outstations and some of the sights we saw was heartbreaking. Um, the condition people would ask us what we have to share when we went out. We also had to climb trees and do a lot of hiking and walking to get to all our stations to be able to retrieve the data from the stations. Um, so, yes, it was a very fit few months after Maria first. My name is Marshall Alexander, I'm the um, Acting Senior Met Officer. Well, I've been employed at the Met Service from 1992. I've been the principal interface between the department and the users of its products and services, um, responsible for planning and coordinating and carrying out the, the department's programs. My experience has been very fulfilling. I mean, it's a very interesting job. But at the beginning, it started off um, slow in, in terms of um, expertise in terms of the whole expertise of the of the, um, the nomenclature of the office because I started off as an entry level technician and then following that I moved up to a mid-level technician. I started the mid-level technician course in Barbados but then I was transferred from, from the mid-level technician course to the um, senior level med technician course which is the forecasting course. I would say the thing I enjoy about my job is being able to provide the public with information that would result in saving of lives. During the passage of Maria, I was at ODM because based on our protocol, the, the um, SMO um, would be located at the, at the EOC, at ODM. So every, all the, the, the highest level of warning was already out and it was just a matter of providing information and monitoring in terms of the progress of that system, in terms of development. Um, it happened that at 7.45 p.m., the system developed into a Category 5 hurricane and then the information started, started going out and coming in in terms of the impact, in terms of what is going on outside, in terms of flooding, you know, getting um, listening to calls on the radio of um, Rosa River and breaking its bank and people in, um, on the East Coast, roofs getting blown off, etc. We get information from National Center showing the, the projected path. Um, but during the, the impact of that system in Maria, um, we lost all communication. So we, we were no longer in touch with anybody. So we could not send out information and we could not receive information. 
under the DVRP um, project, uh, we have the construction of a new Met Office building and also the um, implementation of, a, of a, um, a, a network of weather stations around the island. Because in the past, we've been having issues with what we call microclimate, where you have rainfall in certain areas and we don't have the exact information in terms of how much rainfall we have. So that um, weather station network will cover the it will, it will cover the distribution of rainfall in the area and with that you can probably be able to find exactly where in Dominica you have maximum maximum rainfall. I've had the opportunity to work in other countries where I was given offers, you know, but I rather serve my country and I think I feel very happy at home, you know, serving my people.